I'm Felicia. And I'm Ian. And we are the Paranormal Lovers. Hello, Paranormal Dudes, Dudettes, and Dudays. Welcome back to another episode of the Paranormal Lovers. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Thanks for joining us for another week. Another episode, episode 55. 55. <clears throat> I don't know what's going on with my voice there. Sorry. All right. Uh, Skipped an episode on you guys. <laughs> yeah, we switched it around because Mama don't like odd numbers. <clears throat> Seriously, my voice. Jeez, your eyes. Hydro homies. <laughs> my fourth cup of water, and it's three o'clock in the afternoon. I think I'm doing okay. <laughs> if I can get that one down and a liquid IV, hey, y'all hit us up with right. like sponsorship. Um, I'll be doing good. You want to talk about the merch first? Uh, we can talk about the merch. We got some merch up, guys. We got merch incoming. <laughs> yeah, I spent last night and most of the day today. So sorry. I have to plug something up. Y'all don't mind me moving around. Uh, most of the day today, uploading new merch onto a new shop that we have. Thank you to Joseph and Gabriel from Indigenous Tales for giving us the recommendation for that shop because it's real freaking simple. And I am an enjoying. She's been working on some designs. I have been. <laughs> I have been since yesterday. So you guys want to head on over to the Paranormal Lovers at Threadless? No. Yeah. The Paranormal Lovers dot Threadless dot com. Hey, <laughs> I got it out. All right. Um, and it looks like we're going to have a sale, like right off the bat. Having a two for one sale. No, yeah. just kidding. Uh, no, <laughs> not a two for one sale. Not two for one. Um, but no, it's like a. The 311 song pops into my head. Like, huh? The 311 song pops into my head. I don't know that song. For that. <laughs> I don't know that Two one. for one, five for four, half ounces, LPs, and kilos. Ah. All right. Somebody will get it. <laughs> Uh no, it'll be fourteen ninety nine shirts. Yeah. Um. And oh shit! Listen, look, I done forgot what the damn promo code was. <laughs> and I told you, and you don't remember either, do you? Like they, they can get it on there, right? Or you could put it in the show notes. Yeah, I'll put it. People. I'll add it in the show notes because I don't remember what the hell so the get, code was. Get so. the promo code from the show notes. And yeah, and that'll start on January twenty second. So Tuesday. So the day before this comes out, so they'll be on sale when this comes out. You guys can head on over there and get those. And there's free shipping on orders over a hundred dollars. Mm. So I mean, if y'all want to help a bitch that got fired out, oh yeah, I got fired. <laughs> <laughs> so yay! If you've been on Instagram, you already know that I got fired. Yeah. So yeah, so y'all uh, head on over there. And I'm thinking about doing Patreon again, right? And there would be like Q and A's. Uh, we might do like some movie nights or something. Do but... some extra show. She's going to do some extra shows. And yeah, uh, we would do the releasing the video of this on the day that we record it. So yeah. you would get that like three days early two, three or four days early, depending on what day we record. It's either Saturday or Sunday. And then I was also thinking about dipping my toe in some true crime. Yeah. And maybe posting some true crime episodes or some history episodes not really sure let us know what you guys think yeah y'all let us know what you think so if you'd like to sign up get some extra stuff from us that would be great we'd and like to make it i only have one tier right now it's like three dollars like i said it's deactivated so yeah it doesn't even matter at the moment but like i might split it and do another one i right. don't know we'll see so so yeah. what do you love about this week baby <laughs> Uh, that's such a loaded question because it was not a good week right it was not a good week so like i got fired struggling on sunday and that like put me in the dumps for a couple of days it just put me in a really weird headspace which sucked because at the same time i was in this really weird headspace i had patty home for martin luther king jr day yeah. and then they had a snow day the next day and then they got out of school early yesterday it's been hectic and I'm just like, I just need a nap. Mm -hmm. So I went to it like eight o'clock this morning. I got up. I've been getting up at four 30 every day for like three weeks now. 
and like i'm just um if you guys are struggling with mental health there is a phone number you can call there's a number you can text hotline it's 988 yeah right yeah 988 is a national hotline you can call or text that number yeah so if you're having a mental health crisis and you can't get out of a situation just text them please let somebody know yeah for sure because i'm doing okay um i had an appointment with my med manager we went up on my meds and like we're handling things and she kind of validated some stuff for me but right um i have enjoyed the fact that i've been able to spend more time on the podcast yeah you know because like i'm gonna start doing paranormal quickies which will be released once a week probably on sunday i think um we're looking at doing other episodes getting all this merch and stuff done so she's rolling it out full blast guys (laughs) y'all have (laughs) no idea the levels of anxiety (laughs) i am riddled with right now but it's okay it's okay it'll be all right all right what did you love about this week um i loved the little bit of snow we got yesterday even though i was at work like i'd go outside and i was like oh like snowing don't get me wrong i love the <laughs> snow but can we have it snow and be 30 yeah and not have it snow and be well, eight well yesterday it was <laughs> yes it's true yesterday today it was. it's like it's like there's no snow it's a great sunshiny day but it's like eight degrees yeah so it's freezing I think it's actually like 18 degrees outside right now yeah and like listen i get it some of y'all live up north you're used to like negative numbers that's fine we don't we live in the mountains of north carolina and yeah we're used to it getting cold but like down to the teens yeah maybe once or twice into the single digits but like teens is what we're used to when it gets bitterly cold (laughs) around here so it being negative or being six the other day and it's then like, you turn around and it feels like negative three. Yeah. With the wind. <laughs> it's I'm not okay. I'm not built for this weather. I'm not. I need heat. Some of our friends had a uh their heat pump froze up. So oh, like God. uh we, we were like, oh my god. It exploded. <laughs> it like like I think one of the water lines froze on it or something. So it exploded. Yeah. And like it like seeped out of the sides of the heat pump. It's crazy. We felt real bad for them. <laughs> yeah. Thankfully they got it fixed. So yeah. they're fine, but like holy crap. This has not been fun weather. Mm-mm. I'm ready for that warm weather again. Yeah. All right, Bill. I already know. We all know, but what do you got for us today? Okay. Episode fifty five. Uh had to skip one. It was going to be fifty four, but uh I don't like Episode odd numbers. 55, Blackbeard's Ghost Part 2. Ooh. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Part 2. <laughs> and just so y'all know, two, 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 two. there might be another one. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's so much to talk about on Blackbeard. Um, like last time we, uh, we kind of talked about uh, what he looked like and how he kind of became a feared pirate. Um, how he kind of seemed to be everywhere all at once. Uh, it it kind of reminds me of the movie uh, The Princess Bride, where like he's like, "Yo, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm the Dread Pirate Robertson," uh, but I'm I wasn't the only Dread Pirate Robertson. There was many before me, and uh, you know he used to come to my cabin and say, uh, "Young Wesley, uh, do my chores, and uh, tomorrow I'll kill you." <laughs> <laughs> okay sure <laughs> get right on that <laughs> right but uh so blackbeard had two ships that we knew of during the beginning of his career uh let's talk about how this famous pirate grew and his fleet became the talk of many towns in the 1700s um so teaches movements between late 1717 and Hold on, I like moved in. <laughs> was reading between late 1717 and early 1718 are kind of unknown. He and Bonet were probably responsible for an attack off uh, Saint Estastius, a tiny Dutch island in the Caribbean, in December 1717. Henry Bostock claimed to have heard the pirates say they would head toward the Spanish-controlled 
Samana Bay in Hispaniola. But a cursory search revealed no pirate activity. They wanted that Spanish gold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Better watch out for that Inquisition. Captain Hume of HMS Scarborough reported on February 6th that a pirate ship of 36 guns and 250 men and a sloop of 10 guns and 100 men were said to be cruising amongst the Leeward Islands. Hume reinforced his crew with soldiers armed with muskets and joined up with the HMS Seaford to track the two ships. To no avail, though they discovered that the two ships had sunk a French vessel off of St. Christopher Island and reported also that they had last been seen going down the north side of Hispaniola. <laughs> Yanola. It's a lot of words. <laughs> right. Um, although no confirmation. Oh. Hold on one second. I lost my place. <laughs> He's working with his new computer. So. Yeah. Wait a minute. Where did it go? Hold on. Do, 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 do. Although no confirmation exists that these two ships were controlled by Teach and Bonet, the author Angus Constum believes it is very likely that they were. This place is where I would go hang out if I was a pirate. Mm -hmm. Warm temperatures, aqua blue water, hell yeah. Oh, I'm 1000% <laughs> like a Jack Sparrow Caribbean Right. Like, leave me out here. Bye. In March 1718, while taking on water at, at Turneff Island, east of Belize, both ships spotted the Jamaican Longwood Cutting Sloop Adventure, making for the harbor. She was stopped, and her captain, Harriet, invited was invited to join the pirates. Harriet and his crew accepted the invitation and Teach sent over a crew to sail the adventure, making Israel Hands the captain. So remember that name. He, uh, whoa. It's a better name than Israel Keys. I just totally lost my place again. Tell you that right now. You having issues with that computer today? I you? am. It's like being touchy. Guys, go for quality over like <laughs> cheapness. So Harriet and his crew accepted the invitation, and Teach sent over a crew to sail the adventure, making Israel Hands the captain. Wonder if he had a a wooden hand. <laughs> Israel Hands. <laughs> it, it's funny because it's making me think of like. I'm imagining it says that he sent a crew over and I'm sure that they like got beside each other, probably swung over on ropes, whatever it is that pirates do. Right. But all I can remember, all I can think about is Casey out there in the Bering Sea swimming to the summer bay <laughs> yeah. to help them like jumping the over and swimming survival suit. I'm like, Oh, pirates out there in survival suits. Imagine across like, the ocean. imagine like 50 of them just like swimming <laughs> and then so climbing ridiculous. on, on a rope ladder. Right. He's so ridiculous. <laughs> they sailed for the Bay of Honduras, where they added their another ship and four sloops to their flotilla. So we we're talking like a Who, bunch of ships. What is this, Captain Sean over here? Like <laughs> making a whole fleet? Listen, we've been watching a lot of Deadliest Catch. Lately, we have. Okay. <laughs> it's been uh, it's been pretty cool, like studying and watching at the same time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they have a very, like, I think we're watching season 17, 18, yeah, 16. I think it's 18. I think it's like 2017 to 2018 because Nick's still alive. Yeah. And uh, it's like, I don't, it's got a very pirate feel to this season. It does. They're like, like all drama and like, they're all fighting with each other and people, stuff. Like, backstabbing people and shit. Yeah, it's they wild. are. On the 9th of April, Teach's enlarged fleet of ships looted and burnt the Protestant ship Caesar. Funny, a ship named after a Roman emperor, but it was Protestants. <laughs> that, that is funny. <laughs> 
His fleet then sailed to the Grand Caymans, where they captured a small turtler, which is uh, it's another type of ship. I'm like, a turtler? Small turtler. That sounds cute. A turtler. A turtler. <laughs> which, uh, oh yeah, let us know in the comments uh, what you think about the small turtler. <laughs> the turtler. Turtler. I don't know. It makes me think of a story that my mom told me about how when her and my brother were like younger, they used to live on the coast and they went, decided to go out <clears throat> in the ocean one day. I think maybe they went out to go fishing or something. They weren't going very far out, but they like went out in this little rubber dinghy mm-hmm. and it was just her and my brother. And he was like six or something. Right. And she said this giant fucking sea turtle like popped up beside her boat and it was like the size of her boat, if not bigger. I wonder if it was people actually catching turtle turtles or something. Though. Maybe they were like catching a bunch of turtles. But if they're hunting like sea turtles, I can't imagine how big sea turtles were back then before right. uh, people <laughs> really got their hands in them. But anyway, sorry. Teach probably sailed toward Havana, where he may have captured a small Spanish vessel that had left the Cuban port. Then They then sailed to the wrecks of the 1715 Spanish fleet off the coast of Florida. So he was steadily making his way up the east coast of the Americas. There, Teach disembarked his crew of the captured Spanish sloop before proceeding north to the port of Charlestown, South Carolina. Yay! Attacking these three vessels along the way. Charlestown later became Charleston, South Carolina. I love that city. At the end of the Revolutionary War. Uh, it's a really cool city. Uh, me and Felicia are actually planning a cruise sailing out of there this year. <laughs> I'm planning to live there in my old age. <laughs> right. You'll love that place. It's beautiful. I love it. But imagine how scary it would be to see a fleet of ships coming up the coast flying Blackbeard's black flag with a skull on it. I'm good. Right? That'd be terrifying. It would be terrifying. <laughs> um. He also flew a solid blood red flag. So, like, he flew the skull and a red flag. What does the red flag represent? Uh, I'm not sure. Hang on. That'd be Googleable. <laughs> Let's find out. Let's find out, guys. Let's find out, guys. Pirate blood. Vlood. Not blood. Probably just meant they were pirates. Red. Followed, this is from uh, Wikipedia. Wikipedia. <clears throat> Talking about Jolly Roger. Yeah. Followed by warning shots. If the enemy did not strike their own flag to signal surrender, the red flag, or bloody flag as it was known, was raised, signaling that the target's cargo valuables would be taken by force and that no quarter will be given <laughs> if the enemy ship continued to refuse surrender. So they're pretty much just like, we're hey, gonna kill you. we're coming. <laughs> you can either give us a shit on your ship or you're going to die. Yep. You can either so, fly the white one or you're yeah. done. <laughs> They're like, yeah, no, we're not. Uh, we're not playing this game. I'm going to let you know what's up real quick. Right. Like off I said, that. it would be terrifying mm-hmm. <laughs> to see it coming. So by May 1718, Teach had awarded himself the rank of Commodore and was at the height of his power. He was a king of the sea. Didn't somebody in Scientology call themselves the Commodore? Yep. What L. Ron f- Hubbard. Fuck. <laughs> L. Ron Hubbard was the Commodore. Motherfucker, you ain't no pirate. <laughs> oh, Sea Org. Yeah. yeah okay. See, see what I mean? Jeez. Like, they had all kinds of. Uh, oh, Scientology like had all kinds of. I don't like those weird similarities between my boy Blackbeard and right. Scientology. <laughs> <laughs> It's crazy, isn't it? It's so bizarre. <laughs> so late this month, his flotilla blockaded the port of Charlestown in the Providence of South Carolina. Pro- um, blockade means they just blocked it off to where nobody could get through without uh, paying them. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. All vessels entering or leaving the port were stopped. 
and as the town had no guard ship, its pilot boat was the first to be captured. Over the next five or six days, about nine vessels were stopped and ransacked as they attempted to sail past Charlestown Bar, where Teach's fleet was anchored. One such ship, the Crowley, (laughs) Mr. Crowley, Crowley, Crowley. Okay, (laughs) Mark Shepard, can we not have six heart attacks ever again, please? Right. Jesus, Crowley. Stop it. (laughs) Right. Like, we don't need Crowley to die. Right. Not anytime soon. Let me get older. So, the Crowley was headed for London with a group of prominent Charlestown citizens, which included Samuel Ragg, a councilman of the Providence of South Carolina, was stopped. Her passengers were questioned about the vessels still in port and then locked below decks for about half a day. Teach informed the prisoners that his fleet required medical supplies from the colonial government of South Carolina and that if if none were forthcoming, all prisoners would be executed. (laughs) That's what the blood red flag means. Yep. Walk the plank, ye hearties. Either surrender now or die. (laughs) I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) He said what he said they would he would send their heads to the government and burn all their captured ships. What what happened to Blackbeard? I don't know. (laughs) Like from the time that he was stealing wine right to like threatening to send people's heads to the government. What happened to my boy? I don't know. Jeez. Maybe it's a different guy. I mean, he had like, you know, 20 different names. I Teach, mean, maybe. T- touch. touch. <laughs> I guess it is possible that like, maybe all the captains were like, yeah, I'm Teach. Yeah. You know? Right. That's an interesting thought. That's what I, I think anyways. But uh, Rag agreed to Teach's demands and a... Mr. Marks and two pirates were given two days to to collect the drugs. <laughs> drugs. <laughs> Wait. Oh, drugs. Medical drugs. I yeah. was like, drugs? <laughs> they were like fucking finding some coke they went, or something? Like, <laughs> they went from pirates to smugglers. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of hard drugs did they have back then? I'm so confused. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also thinking, you know, going back just a second to him like threatening people. I'm also wondering if it was the fact that like he never actually had to follow through on his threats. Yeah, I mean, people did it for him because people were just terrified of him. Right. So he could threaten them all day long and be like, I'm going to kill you. And then they're like, OK, take everything you want. Well. Oh. Probably most of the pirates that sailed with him were more ruthless than he was, yeah. probably. And yeah. so he didn't have to. He just was like, I'm going to let the boys do their thing if you don't give me what I want. That's a good point. <laughs> but Teach moved his fleet and captured the ships to within about five or six leagues from land. Uh, not sure how much a league is, but it's, I don't think it's a long long ways yeah let's find out three days later a messenger sent by marks returned to the fleet mark's boat had capsized and delayed their arrival in charlestown teach granted a reprieve of two days but still the party did not return the guys getting the drugs yeah um from google one nautical league equals 3.452 miles yeah, so not far Mm-mm. on the ocean, anyways. Kind of like the equivalent of a yard to mm-hmm. feet. He then called a meeting of his fellow sailors and moved eight ships into the harbor, causing panic within the town. <laughs> I fucking <laughs> bet. <laughs> He's coming for us. Right. It's like fucking seeing Vikings coming down the damn river like (laughs) like in the town had to know like well they hadn't got their drugs yet so like what do we do yeah they ain't got their drugs now we don't have it it's like oh fuck (laughs) when marks finally returned to the fleet he explained what had happened so like his ship had sank before he could get the drugs back right 
Um, on his arrival, <clears throat> he he presented the pirates' demands to the the governor and the drugs had been quickly gathered, but the two pirates sent to escort him had proved difficult to find. They had been busy drinking with friends and... (laughs) Okay, hang on. Are we sure that this is not a season of Deadliest Catch? How many (laughs) people has Jake had to fire off of his fucking boat because they want to go have a drink and then they show up like six hours late? He's like, you're fucking fired! Get off my fucking boat! Yep. (laughs) He goes nuts. But yeah, they were finally discovered drunk somewhere. Oh, (laughs) jeez. Teach kept uh, his side of the bargain and released the captured ships and his prisoners, albeit relieved of their valuables, including the fine clothing some of them had worn. Mm. While in Charlestown, Teach learned that Woods Rogers had left England with several men of war with orders to purge the West Indies of pirates. <laughs> Good luck. Is this Jolly <laughs> Rogers? Uh, maybe. That's what it had me thinking. Oh, that wasn't Jolly Rogers a pirate? Yes. But a lot of people, a lot of, what you'll start learning when I keep going with this thing, that a lot of the pirate hunters used to be pirates. Ugh. Yeah. He was an English sea captain, privateer, and slave trader. Yeah. A lot of those guys were. 1718, the first royal governor of the Bahamas. Yeah. Yeah, Who, Woods Woods Rogers or Jolly Rogers? Woods Rogers. Is it W-O-O-D-E-S? Yes. Yep. Woods Rogers. So he had orders to purge the West Indies of pirates. Good luck, filler. I mean... (laughs) Jeez. Teach's flotilla sailed northward along the Atlantic coast and into Topsail Inlet. Nice. Also known as Beaufort Inlet. Or Beaufort, depending on which. Off the coast of North Carolina. Okay. I was like, is this South Carolina or North Carolina? <laughs> North Carolina. One of each on the coast, and they're not that far from each other. <laughs> we went to the North Carolina one, right? No, we went to the South Carolina oh, okay. one. okay. Yep. Dang. I was going to talk about that. <laughs> I was go- I was going to say it's such a cool place to vacation. We went there a couple of years ago, but we stayed in a barn. It was awesome. <laughs> that would have been really great if it hadn't stormed the whole time we were there. Right. Because it literally stormed yeah. the whole time we were there. It was very soggy. <laughs> and we ended up like leaving a day early because I couldn't take like the stuff falling on the roof and the wind, like the flooding. <laughs> we were in well, we were in the top. Mm-hmm. Sorry, tangent. We were in the top. It was an apartment, but then the bottom of the barn was still open. Yep. Like there weren't any walls. There was still like so the Parts wind is just stuff go down howling there. through there. <laughs> It'd go howling through there, and you'd hear like metal flying around and shit. And then there was like a place where in house people were sleeping right down the road. And like, I don't want to have prejudice against them, but I can't help that I'm uncomfortable with them being like right there. Yeah. But we were also like really secluded. Yeah. You know, like if it was New York City or something, I'd be like, oh, it's an unhoused person. Okay. But we were so secluded. That's what freaked me out. Yeah. And we weren't that secluded but we were yeah you know what i mean it was a cool place i like it's a beautiful place i'd live down there in a heartbeat um so there they intended to careen their ships to scrape their hulls but on june 10th 1718 the queen anne's revenge ran aground on a sandbar cracking her main mast and several damaging several of her main timbers. Would this be the uh, graveyard of the Atlantic? Yeah. I mean, it's Beaufort, North Carolina. It's right on the Outer Banks. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> that's North Carolina's treacherous coast, you know? like It's like we're the coast. That's literally a famous thing. Like this mm-hmm. place has hundreds, if not a thousand wrecked ships just yep. litter in the bottom of the ocean. Teach ordered several sloops to throw ropes across to the flagship in an attempt to free her. 
a sloop commanded by Israel Hands of the Adventure also ran aground, and both vessels appeared to be damaged beyond repair, leaving only only the Revenge and the captured Spanish sloop. At some point, Captain Teach learned of the offer of a royal pardon from the king. He talked with his partner in piracy, Bonet, and confided his willingness to attempt such a pardon. The pardon was open to all pirates who surrendered on or before September 5th, 1718, but contained a caveat stipulating that immunity was offered only against crimes committed before January 5th. Although in theory, this left Bonet and Teach at risk of being hanged for their actions at Charlestown Bar. Mm -hmm. Most authorities could waive such conditions. Um, Teach thought that Governor Charles Eden was a man he could trust. But to make sure that he could, he waited to see what would happen to uh, another sea captain. Smart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bonet left immediately on a small sailing boat for Bath Town, where he surrendered to Governor Eden and received his pardon. He traveled back to Beaufort Inlet to collect the revenge and the remainder of his crew, intending to sail to St. Thomas Island to receive a commission. Unfortunately for him, Teach had stripped the vessel of its valuables and provisions and had marooned its crew. <laughs> oh, snap. <laughs> Fucking Blackbeard. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to go get this part. And he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you go, go ahead. It. Go ahead. Let me know go how it turns that. out. I'd really like to do that. Let me know how it turns out. Yeah, you go ahead. I'll watch all this for you. It's fine, brother. It's fine. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. And then fucking Bonet gets back. He's like, mother. Took everything. <laughs> Just gone. It was all gone. <laughs> oh, poor guy. At least he was pardoned, though. And you gotta like imagine like trying to search the sea down for this guy. Like, like where <laughs> would he have gone? <laughs> like, you don't, it's it's the sea. Oh, well, I mean, I guess like good thing for Bonet is like he's pardoned now. So right. he's like free and he doesn't Legit. have to worry about that. And now, like, Blackbeard has committed yet another crime <laughs> under the umbrella of piracy. <laughs> I mean, what would you do? <laughs> I, I am not a pirate. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So, Bonet set out for revenge, but he was unable to find him. Yeah. <laughs> Motherfucker's gone. <laughs> he was gone. <laughs> He and his crew returned to piracy and were captured on September 27th, 1718. Bonet? At, yep. Oh. At the mouth of the Cape Fear River. Oh, shit. All but four were tried and hanged in Charlestown. Jesus. Author Robert Lee thinks that Captain Teach and Israel Hands ran their ships aground on purpose mm. to reduce the fleet's crew compliment so like he, they were trying to like reduce everything so because yeah. like, they knew they were getting close to being caught mm -hmm. um so yeah they were that's what that guy thinks anyways and such increasing their shares of the spoils that too i mean they, yeah they could just take all of it and bye guys bye <laughs> see you later bye during the trial of bonet's crew the Revenge's boatswain, Ignitus Pell, testified that the ship was run ashore and lost, which Teach caused to be done. Lee considers it plausible that Teach let Bonet in on his plan to accept a pardon from Governor Eden. He suggested that Bonet do the same. <laughs> and as a war between the quadruple alliance of 1718 and Spain was threatening uh, to consider taking a privateer's commission from England. Lee suggests that Teach also offer Bonet the return of his ship, the Revenge, uh, 
an author in 2007 seems to think a similar idea that Teach began to see the Queen Anne's revenge as a liability. Mm. While a pirate fleet, fleet was anchored, news of this was sent to the neighboring towns and colonies, and any vessels nearby would delay sailing. It was prudent, therefore, it was prudent, therefore, teach not to linger for too long. Although wrecking the ship was a somewhat extreme measure. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, before Teach sailed his last remaining sloop to Ocracoke Island or Ocracoke Inlet, Teach marooned about 25 men on a small sandy island about five kilometers from the mainland. He may have done this to stifle any protest they made. I was like, you're either with me or you're not. Right. <laughs> uh, if they guessed that their kept if they guessed their captain's plans. But Bonet rescued them two days later. Bonet's a great guy. Right. Teach continued on to Bath, where in June 1718, only days after Bonet had departed with his pardon. He and his much reduced crew received their pardon from Governor Eden. So Teach went and got one too. And if anybody's wondering why he's going to Bath to get a pardon from the governor when our capital is Raleigh, used to not be. Used yeah. to be Bath. Yeah. It also used to have an E on the end of it, but they dropped it because America. Right. Everything's better with fewer letters, I guess. <clears throat> He teach settled in Bath on the eastern side of Bath Creek at Plum Point near Eden's home. <laughs> so right next to the governor. Mm -hmm. During July and August, he traveled between his base in the town and his sloop off of Ocracoke Island or inlet. Johnson's account states that he married the daughter of a local plantation owner although there is no supporting evidence of this. I would hope not. <laughs> Eden gave Teach permission to sail to St. Thomas to seek a commission as a privateer. He just wanted to get Teach out of town. I bet he did. <laughs> and Teach was given the official title to his remaining sloop, which he renamed the Adventure. Nice. By the end of August, he had returned to piracy, and in the same month, the governor of Pennsylvania issued a warrant for his arrest. <laughs> they just kept going. <laughs> but Teach then, by then was operating in Delaware Bay, some distance away. He took two French ships leaving the Car Caribbean, moved one crew across to the other, and sailed the remaining ship back to Ocracoke. <laughs> In September, he told Eden that he had found the French ship at sea, deserted. <laughs> this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> so I just found a ship. I just found it, man. It was just out there. <laughs> Listen, that's fucking smart, though. Right. I mean, he was probably paying the dude, too. But Right. Um, a vice admiral ad admiralty court was quickly convened, presided over by Tobias Knight and the Collector of Customs. The ship was judged as a derelict found at sea, and of its cargo, 20 hogsheads of sugar were awarded to Knight and 60 to Eden. Jesus. So Teach was paying them, yeah. basically. Teach and his crew were given what remained in the vessel's hold. They pulled it off. <laughs> mm, that they sure did. Ocracoke Inlet was Teach's favorite anchorage. It was a perfect vantage point from which to view ships traveling between the various settlements of Northeast Carolina. And it was from there that Teach first spotted the approaching ship of Charles Vane. I'm sure everybody went through there back then. Mm -hmm. Like, it's that's like the most eastern tip of the north america <laughs> what uh north carolina i don't right? think so no no 
Mm-mm. I mean, I feel like the ones up. I mean, north, Maine might be, but I feel like the ones up north are much further east than right. we are. But it is treacherous. It is a very <laughs> Well, I'm sure it was a very well used route back in the day when they were establishing the colonies and stuff. Sure. Charles Vane was an English pirate. Several months earlier, Vane had rejected the pardon brought by Woods Rogers and escaped the men of war the English captain brought with him to Nassau. That's my favorite place in the world. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've been to Nassau like a bunch of times, guys. We're going it's summer. amazing. I'm so excited. Uh, he had also been pursued by Teach's old commander, Benjamin Hornigold. Oh, God, not Hornigold. Who was by then <coughs> a pirate hunter. Oh, no. Yeah. Teach and Vane spent several nights on the southern tip of Ocracoke Island, accompanied by such notorious figures as Israel Hands, Robert Deal, and Calico Jack. Calico Jack? Wait a second. (laughs) That's a character on, uh, what's that one? (sighs) Octonauts. Yep. That's Quasi's uh, grandpa. Right. Calico Jack, I'm pretty (laughs) sure. (laughs) That's awesome. (laughs) He's like an old park ranger that lives in the Florida Everglades or something. Also a famous pirate. No, he's a pirate. Right. Quasi's grandfather is a pirate. Yeah, he is. It's Twitch's, Tweak's grandfather, who's a park ranger. Right. Sorry, y'all. So many kid (laughs) shows. It's been a minute. We should watch that. For for real. (laughs) Now that we know it's got Calico in it. Now we know who Calico Jack is. Yep. Sounds like these pirates were planning something big. A big heist of sorts. But I guess we'll have to wait till next time to find out (laughs) to find out what that big heist was. Oh Lord, have mercy! (laughs) Woo! Well, that was awesome. And find out about Blackbeard's ghost. Blackbeard's ghost. (laughs) Yeah, I don't really blame him for uh, picking Ocracoke to be like his main anchor point because, like. It's been a long, like, it's been over 20 years since I've been to Ocracoke or the a lot of North Car- Banks. A lot of North Carolina, like, the ports and stuff are, like, one way in, one way out, mm-hmm. and real tight, too. So, mm-hmm. it's, like, it makes sense. Like, yeah. you could get in real tight with different vessels and stuff. But, like, it's it's beautiful down there. It is pretty, The Outer too. Banks is one of the most amazing natural formations like lots of places to hide lots of places to hide they still have wild horses down there yeah which is one of the most amazing things to see and like don't fucking try and mess with the horses y'all i know like if you go see them keep your distance let them stay wild humans do not need to touch everything they're dangerous okay (laughs) they're not dangerous we're dangerous to them i don't want them getting used to people and no but it's pretty, and then Kitty Hawk, you know, mm-hmm. where the Wright brothers allegedly first in um, flight took the first flight. I actually heard somewhere that like the first flight happened in like India. Right. I'm not entirely sure on that. I'll have to look into it. But I mean, knowing history, like it makes sense to me. Like, right, a lot too about everything else. <laughs> Honestly, it's getting to a point where. Everything I learned in history is leaving a bad taste in my mouth. Yeah, for it's sure. It's leaving such a bad taste in my mouth. Like, I was literally just sitting here thinking about the fact that someday they're going to teach our kid about Roanoke. Right? Right. Whole village of people just fucking disappeared. Yeah. And it was just one word written in a tree. Yeah. Yeah, motherfuckers, they were telling you that they went to live with the Croatoan natives. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Like, that's they a, didn't just disappear. They went and lived with people that were going to take care of them and help them learn how to live in this new harsh environment. Yeah. I went and seen uh, the Lost <laughs> Colony one time. Yeah. I've seen it. I've seen the uh, the Cherokee play, too. Uh, it, Unto These Hills. Unto These Hills. Yeah. I haven't seen Unto These Hills. It's Both of them are really, really good. They're, like, yeah. done outside, and they have, like, good uh, production stuff. But really I will good. have to say, like the legend of Roanoke, it's I mean, it would get it wouldn't give us a we wouldn't have what is that storm of the century? 
Is that what it is? That Stephen King movie with the guy? I think so. That comes into Maine? Yeah. Yeah, we wouldn't have that. We wouldn't have certain episodes of Supernatural. So it's a fun story, but like there's truth to it. Yeah. You know, like you need to be telling kids the truth and not just telling them that, oh, it's a mystery. Nobody knows. Right. Like, no, they went and lived with those people over there because they were willing to take them in and help them survive. I want to say <clears throat> they they said both theories in the play. Like, why are we lying about it? Like they they were like, well, on one hand, they might have died. But on the other hand, they may very well much still be alive yeah. because they might have, you know, went and lived with the natives. I mean, they've been talking because the, the people deserted them. Like, well, it wasn't that they deserted them. Um, Sir Walter Raleigh couldn't get back because a war broke out and the queen wouldn't yeah. let him leave to go back. So he yeah. was gone for like three years yeah. before he finally got to go back to the colony. And by that time when they got there, everybody was gone. It couldn't have survived. But then for decades and generations after that, they were talking about how there were blue eyed, blonde haired and or, de or descendants within the Croatoan tribe. Right. Because these people were like, help. <laughs> yep. They went to the tribe and said, help. What, wasn't it John Smith? Is that no. his name? No. No, oh, John Smith. What are you talking about? I think Who's there, name? I think that was one of the main guys was John Smith went and like, like they think that they went and lived with the natives. Maybe, but I know that uh, Sir Walter Raleigh's daughter lived there. Right. Um, And his granddaughter was the first american quote unquote mm -hmm. virginia dare that's why we have dare county down there and we right. also have the state of virginia yeah i think her name popped up in that play too probably because she was the first one born in this country i want to say that was like her lover was john smith john smith and virginia dare but i don't know you keep saying john smith know. and it's making me think of pocahontas which is another bullshit story <laughs> right <laughs> everybody's like i saw a picture the other day that had pocahontas but with like the red handprint on her face and it was like the original missing murdered an indigenous woman and i was like right. oh fuck <laughs> you right you right you right damn it all right well that was fun wow we are almost at 50 minutes yeah We've almost hit an hour I'm telling you black episode. blackbeard's big one man <laughs> blackbeard is a big one and there was so much stuff that he did you're getting a lot better about reading too. So thanks. That was just a really long one. Yeah. And my next week's going to be really long and it's going to be a whole bunch of fuckery. So part three is probably going to be the longest one. Oh, God. <laughs> so. I'm doing a two parter next too. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure I can cram everything into the second part that happens. Right. But all right, guys. Well, thanks we for love joining you guys. us. We do love you guys. Yay. Thanks for joining us. Uh, if you would like, head on over to Instagram. Give us a follow at the Paranormal Lovers. You can also search for that in the search bar on YouTube to watch our videos. Um, you can send us an email at theparanormallovers at yahoo.com for a topic request or to just comment on an episode or send us a personal story. Tell us what you like. Tell us uh, that we suck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll take any of it. We, any love, we love all of it. good publicity. <laughs> yep. Head on over and check out our merch at theparanormallovers.threadless.com and we will be having that sale that started yesterday when you hear this in your ear holes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. And there's one more. You can also link, you can also get to that uh, merch site by going to our website, theparanormallovers.com and it will have a link to the Threadless shop. And you just hit that and it'll take you over there and show that's, you all of our new merch. That's the quickest way to listen or... Uh... Or look at the merch. Yeah, for sure. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us this week. And we will see you guys next week. See you guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs>